Good morning. Um, I'd like to um, tell you something about uh, design for healthcare and uh, healthcare buildings. We're an international uh, architectural practice involved and having been involved in a, in a wide range of buildings all over uh, the world. I think, and these cover obviously public buildings, private buildings of all sorts of use and function and size. Um, what does tie them together? They're all places for people. Um, they're built working with engineers to integrate technology and innovation to make buildings uh, that will last and will be used and will be appreciated by their users. Now, Britain has a great tradition uh, of, of innovation and, and integrated approach of architecture and engineering. And here are two examples which um, I think you could still say are inspirational of, uh, for technologies that and thinking about health buildings of today. In the top left-hand corner, you can see the, the Royal Hospital Chelsea, built by Christopher Wren in 1692, a building for old and ill uh, soldiers. But you can see in its layout, it is, it is proud as an organization. It is set in green surroundings. It's well ventilated, and it is very much linked to the city uh, that, that surrounds it and is to, watch, to a large extent to what it is part of. Um, the other three pictures on this slide show you the uh, Renkioi Hospital in Turkey, built by uh, or designed by Brunel in 1855. It is a thousand bed hospital prefabricated in Britain and it was shipped across and constructed in a, in a period of six months. Now that in itself uh, is, is something that uh, is hard to beat these days. But I think what is clever about it is the thinking about modularity, about the latest uh, thinking at that time about ventilation, health, uh, cross-contamination, avoiding uh, of cross-contamination, uh, but also the organization. It is a diagram where the huts are linked by covered corridors. They could be extended, more could be added. Um, they were linked uh, from the bays where the patients arrived by a railway. And all of that was thinking both about the process of um, care and health, but also about growth, but ultimately obviously about uh, caring and curing um, ill soldiers. Now, when we look at buildings for health, um, we are, we do, we do need to think about groups of people. It is a people business. Uh, the community, the preventive care, the patients, uh, the staff, and all of those are very much reliant on a very advanced and specialized way of facilities. Now that needs to, has its feedback and its parallels in lifestyles, the individual care that pa patients require, the teamwork that staff needs to be encouraged to, to work in, and the general and specialist facilities that hospital buildings have. But the, the wider picture and where it starts um, affecting or thinking about design of hospitals is thinking about the hospital in its context, the, the well-being and the environment of the patient, the organization and the efficiency of the hospital, the way it's laid out is very much the way it's going to work and how equipment and services are seamlessly integrated in that but can also be developed over time. It's, I think people-friendly technology is increasingly making the, domina the dominance of technology much less uh, evidence. And, and I think what has come in its place is a much more focus on patient and people, that both if staff and patients are happy and well, uh, you will get the best results out of the new technologies. Sustainable buildings um, are part of that, thinking about uh, the, not only the future of the planet, but future of uh, energy consumption and global warming and issues like that. And that, to that extent, every b new building has a role to play. 
Um, I'd like to, as time is limited, just show you one example of a, um, a small specialist hospital um, that we have uh, built and was completed two years ago. Obviously, uh, there are, um, we're all familiar with the very large uh, general hospitals, but the new technologies to, um, with using less invasive, the invasive treatments treating many more outpatients and having far fewer inpatients uh, actually enable much smaller hospital buildings with all the advantage of simplicity, uh, less, better teamwork and less uh, confusing layouts and buildings more closely related perhaps to their surroundings. Uh, this hospital that you see here is the, is the Circle Bath Hospital, a private, uh, uh, privately run hospital, uh, but also serving NHS patients, built for a budget uh, no higher than an NHS facility, um, only 6, 000, just over 6,000 square meters, having four operating theaters and 28 patient bedrooms. Um, it is actually run by a partnership of doctors, uh, as you can see in the top right-hand corner. Um, but the whole, it, is, it was a lot, this design, other than uh, obviously the integration of the technologies and the facilities, is was to make a building where the patient feels welcome. Almost a, uh, a hotel-like environment. Uh, you enter on the middle level into a reception, waiting area, but food, treatment, care, consultation rooms are all important as a, as a throughput, if you like, for outpatients who can, will pop in and pop and, and, and have consultations or treatments. At the lower level is a, is a clinical level uh, with diagnostics, operations and recovery rooms. It has four daily operating theatres very important to, that the most highly skilled staff are not locked away in, uh, in dark rooms. Uh, daylight uh, was, was seen to be a very important uh, quality to bring into these rooms, which otherwise are obviously equipped with the very latest technology. And um, they've treated actually over 4,000 uh, patients in these four uh, operating theatres uh, in, in the space of over a year. And combined, obviously, with the latest imaging equipment, MRI, CT scans, X-ray, and ultrasound, uh, makes it for a very specialist and advanced hospital where the actual, most of the patients can uh, leave in a day. For those who um, stay longer, uh, normally just one or two days, uh, there are the rooms at the top level, uh, patient bedrooms, 28 rooms, single rooms uh, on the whole, um, each with a view. Um, daylight, it's well established that daylight and views uh, actually help patient uh, recovery. Um, but the whole thinking about patient bedrooms, their guests, their facilities, the, the infection control with basins, hand wash basins for staff in each room uh, are all there to combine the best current day medical practice with a uh, as a minimized stress level for patients in these hospitals. Obviously, those, those type of small specialist hospitals will still coexist with the much larger healthcare campus buildings, and, uh, and, uh, which are uh, very big, multiple buildings, often uh, needing a master plan, a, a configuration where buildings can grow, where buildings can be added, but where the spaces between the building and the logical arrangement of these buildings need to be thought about as a strategy. And it is important that these buildings do have a civic presence. They are almost becoming cities in their own, uh, in their own right with the numbers of patients and staff involved. Circulation and infrastructure are key and sustainability in operation will obviously um, will obviously be, be um, effective in a much bigger scale with perhaps its own power generation and uh, but also the impact it has on its immediate environment in terms of um, the associated traffic. And finally I think the it is basically again you can see on a on a as this is a sort of a, a view into a future of such a master plan, that the spaces between the building and the landscaping 
the daylight con control and the controlled views of it lead to identity and orientation are a counterpoint to healthy buildings and, and good places to work for staff, visitors and patients. Um, and that is basically, I think, the, uh, to, to round off this, this brief summary of healthcare design, it is, design is an essential part, buildings are an essential part of the tools available to make uh, not just patients better, but uh, to improve society. Thank you. And I will now introduce the next speaker, Oliver Thomas Harrison from the Abu Dhabi Health Authority. Thank you.